probably six of us have decided we're going to drive to Hanya and uh, then go down to the head of the Sumerian Gorge, walk down the gorge, take the boat over to Port Sparkion, catch the bus back to Hanya and to the head of the gorge, I guess, uh, I, I can't remember the name of the town, and then pick up our cars. So we went to the rec center there at the base and checked out some sleeping bags and packs and, you know, none of us were really equipped to, to do any serious camping. I think we all wore uh, uh, military combat boots, you know, jeans and just casual clothes. And so we strike out one morning uh, heading down the gorge. And of course, any of you who have been there, it's a gorgeous uh, trip. Uh, it's you drop 4,000 feet down sea level over about 11 miles. A lot of the drop is in the first uh, uh, few miles. Going down was fine. It was a hot day. Uh, it was wonderful. You know, we, I took lots of pictures. We get down toward the latter to the afternoon, and we get to the, the village on the coast, on the south coast, and uh, one of those uh, Saharan winds is blowing out off of Africa blowing to the north, and it's created some high seas, and the boat that comes in to pick up people there, to take them around, of course, by beyond, uh, there were no boats, so there was no way to get out other than the water. So we slept on the beach in our sleeping bags at night. Uh, we didn't have that much food with us because we didn't anticipate coming to stay, so we slept on the beach. The next morning we get up, uh, the little cafe there is, is about out of food because this wind's been blowing for a number of days, and so we have to walk out. We find a guy in the morning that has this little place that says he can fix breakfast for us. He's got a few eggs. Uh, I don't. He must have had some bread. Between us, we had a can of Spam, a can of fruit cocktail, uh, maybe some Vienna sausage or something, you know, just some pretty awful things. And they whipped that stuff together, and we were able to eat some sort of breakfast with a little bit of coffee. But that was the end of the food. So we, and we didn't have any more to leave with us, so we started walking out. Well, well, in those days, I didn't know that, that I had a situation, if I had a lot of sweet stuff like syrup and fruit cocktail, it would make my blood sugar go down. And so, you know, we tanked up on all that food and, and started walking out. Well, I was okay until we got to the part where we were doing all the climbing. And I ran out of gas really fast. I'm sure my blood sugar probably dropped down to almost nothing. And it was a situation where it was these little switchbacks going back, going up the side of this gorge. And I was concerned for a while uh, that I wasn't going to get out. You know, Ron Stokes was with me. I told him <laughs> that I thought I was going to have to have somebody go up and get it a donkey or something to bring me out. Uh, I'm sure there were no life flight helicopters or anything like that. I managed to make it. Uh, Ron stuck, stuck with me and uh, everybody else was out. I, I had this vision of crawling out the top uh, the top of the, uh, the last little bit of the, the uh, trail, sort of like Harrison Ford in uh, uh, one of his movies where he's on this... Uh, rope bridge when the bridge breaks and he's climbing right over the edge when they think he's falling off and going down into the river with the crocodiles. But uh, I learned a little bit about uh, what happens with blood sugar and I learned a little bit about going on a camping trip uh, being unprepared because all of us 